For the NHL, a regulation skating rink is 61 meters long by 26 meters wide. The rink is basic construction, but making the ice is an art. You have to get the thickness just right. If the ice is too thick, it'll tax the refrigeration system and soften on top. But if the ice is too thin, skate blades will cut right through it. The rink floor is a concrete slab. Covering it with ice begins in the arena's refrigeration room. There, a powerful compressor pumps refrigeration fluid, usually methanol or saline, through pipes running underneath the rink's floor. The concrete chills to between minus 7.7 and minus 9 degrees Celsius, the temperature range required for water to freeze on concrete. This company made its own ice making machine by retrofitting an ice resurfacer. Its onboard water tank feeds 20 sprayers that missed a 4 meter span. The water freezes within seconds. To make a quality ice surface, you have to build up the ice in layers, each about 2 millimeters thick. Driving in the standard outside to inside oval pattern, each layer takes just 8 minutes. With two layers down, they paint the ice white. You'd think it would be simpler to just paint directly on the concrete, but the paint would chip off when they remove the ice at the end of the season. They'd have to scrape and clean the slab before repainting it. A messy, expensive job. So instead, the ice maker mixes water and powdered paint in the onboard tank and sprays three layers onto the ice. This paint doesn't dry. Just like the water the machine sprayed before, it freezes into white ice. This metal dioxide based paint is specially formulated for skating rinks, designed to cling to a base coat of ice. And unlike concrete paint, it's non-toxic and biodegradable. So at the end of the season, the arena can melt the ice and let the water drain without contaminating the environment. Now a crew comes in to paint the hockey markings. Workers lay down string to mark the borders of the red line, the blue lines and the goal lines. They elevate intersecting lines so that the paintbrush can pass. To paint the face-off circles, workers use an anchor, cable and what's called a paint stick. It takes just 20 minutes or so to paint them. The paint is in a portable tank. It flows down the paint stick tube to a rectangular pad on the end. Now the goal crease at each net. First, they trace a template. Then fill it in with a shade of blue you see in swimming pools. They use the same technique to paint the eight red face-off spots. Back to the blue line. First, they spray water to freeze the strings in place. Then, using a brush on the same type of paint stick they used for the circles, they fill in the 30 centimeter wide space between the strings. Now for the home team's logo at center ice. After dabbing a mop in blue chalk, they run it over a computer generated paper stencil of the logo. This transfers the design outline to the ice. They spray water on the chalk lines to freeze them in place, then paint the logo. Finally, with a garden hose, they spray water over all the markings to seal the paint. Then they slowly flood the ice with a larger hose for about a day and a half. This adds the final three centimeters of ice. The now skatable ice surface is about four centimeters thick, containing some 50,000 liters of water, about 300 bathtubs full.